welcome to two hours ago. Have we met before? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the reverse flash when it's over again. What's your first question? Absolutely. What challenging is this? How is she going to ask a question? I think she should get first crack. What do you think you can That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think what's great about these shows is that people watch them for different reasons. And there are some people who are going to come because they want to see the visual effects. They want to see her flying, which catching planes, which is really cool. And I think some people are going to come because it's a show about sisters. And, you know, two sisters who fight and bicker, but they still love each other. And that's not something that you see a lot on TV right now. And I think some people are going to come because it's just a fun, cool show. It's going to be a great, fun hour that, that a family can watch together, which we also think is really important. I love Superman and the world of Superman. All the deep mythology, the family, all the other characters. How deep is the show going to go into that? I mean, pretty deep. I mean, you know, we, you know, obviously the show starts on Krypton. Sure. You know, um, I think one of the most interesting things about Kara as opposed to Clark is that you know, for all practical purposes, Clark Clark is from Kansas. You know, I mean, he was born on Krypton, and obviously he brings his powers with him. But, you know, from the time he was a baby, he grew up here. I mean, you know, Jonathan and Martha Kent are his parents. Um, and, and Jor-El and Mara are more of an abstract. And But for Kara, Kara lived on Krypton until she was 13 years old. I mean, she grew up on this alien planet with alien things. She grew up on a planet where she knew that they weren't alone in the universe, that there were, that from her perspective, that there were millions of planets full, full of life, and then all of a sudden all that was taken away from her. Like her parents died, her friends, her home, and her world. So, um, you know, she's, we're, we're able to talk about Krypton in the present tense in a way because she remembers all the different guilds, you know, which, were, which are mentioned throughout, you know, the, the second episode. And, and she's able to, we're able to have flashbacks in the show to her time on Krypton. Um, so we get to see a little bit more Krypton, but we also get to see it like, most times you see it, it's the last day of its existence. You know, you get to see it when it was like a normal place and it was thriving and, and a lot of Carr's experiences there help influence, uh, you know, uh, sometimes she remembers the clue that she needs to solve a case here on Earth and other times it's just getting to understand her background and, and why she is who she is. Very good. How do you with the, the red and blue elephant is it you're not saying I'm fat, are you? No. <laughs> Am I going to say you're fat? No. Um, uh, you know, su the Superman element, you broke the Superman element, but it's... You know, we, we actually, one of our early episodes kind of addre addresses why he's not on the show every week. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, you know it, was, it was really Greg um, from the beginning said, if we're going to do a show about Supergirl, we have to, it has to be in the world that Superman exists. And one of the sort of themes of the show is that, like, for everybody in our lives, like, there's, there's always that person who's doing it better than you are. You know, it's, it's your boss, it's your friend, your brother. There's always that person that you compare yourself to. And am I good enough? And they're having success doing it their way. Can I have success doing it my way? So we sort of, in a way, you know, we treat the idea of Superman as the sort of, like, that's the perfect way to do it. Um, and, for, and that's the way Kara sees it, that he's sort of doing it the perfect way. And she's learning that, like, that's not how she wants to do it. And that in some ways she can be more successful than him because she has allies, she has friends, she has these relationships, she has relationships with her sister, which are, you know, all things that, that, that the Superman that we're, that we've sort of created is a bit more of a loner. Will the flashbacks be a, a huge part as an arrow, or will they be only used, like, a couple of times. I think it's more, it'll be more like Flash. Like, I, you know, I think that, like, sometimes we'll, sometimes there'll be flashbacks to Midvale when we see her, uh, Kara and Alex growing up living with, um, Ellen Slater and Dean Kane. So, I, it's not going to be in every episode, you know, five-beat story the way the, the way the islands in Hong Kong have been on, 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 uh, on Arrow. It'll be more like Flash where some episodes will have them and some episodes will have, like, one flashback to Krypton. It won't necessarily be a whole story and, you know, maybe down the road we can have a, like, the, the flashback version of a, like when we do the all flashback episode on Arrow, but that's, that's for, that's for, that's, for uh, that's in success. What do you think is the one unique quality that Supergirl brings to the table compared to the Flash or Arrow? Um, I think part of it is that she's, she's a woman, um, you know, and I think that what's great about Kara is that um, she doesn't she doesn't have to give up being a woman to be a hero. 
you know, I think a lot of times when you see female heroes, they've been stripped of their femininity. They've, you know, they, they've, you know, it's like, oh, she's badass. But, you know, Hara's badass, but she can still be a girl. And what we're saying is being a girl isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, you can have feelings. You can be multi-layered. And, and you know, and then some of it, I think, is just, uh, you know, without making grand statements about it's just about her just doing it by example that you see that she's just every bit as capable as as any of these guys the actors don't know uh, what's is there something coming up in the first part of the season that you really want to point the fans to that you really want them to maybe an episode or a key development Oh, I have so many things to tell you. Just start going and, and somebody will tell you to stop. <laughs> um, you know, as always, I, I think that we're, we're going to, you know, there, there are some sort of classic Superman villains that we're going to have on the show that you'll, you'll like, just as we do on any of the shows that we work on, they'll go through the filter of how we interpret them. Okay. Um, you know, there are some villains that, you know, as far as we know, we've never really seen. Um, portrayed in live action before, so really excited about that. And then there's, um, you know, there's truthfully there's there's some parts of the Superman mythology that we're getting to explore. Some of them have been explored before, um, you know, that we're getting to explore in our way. Um, but uh, um, I can't say anything. I'm, so I want to say things. You guys are gonna next year. You're gonna be like. You, when I saw episode seven and they did that thing, you knew that and you didn't tell me. Exactly. Real, real quick. <laughs> Any good guest stars? I mean, because it felt, you're watching the pilot in a very good way, it felt like a modern version of Richard Donald's game. Yeah, and uh, honestly, that, that um, and, and I say this with zero disrespect to any iteration of Superman that came after, you know, the Donner, but for us, that was really, that was the one that really touched us as children. And there is something about it, like being part of your DNA, and you know we, that was always sort of the star that we were guided by because there was there was a um, there was a truth to the Donna version and and a, and a reality and, and an iron ironically a groundedness um, uh, and that that we felt very um, strongly that we wanted to capture and, and, and truthfully that that wasn't really what what was out there right now in the comic book thank you, uh, in the comic book world that like you know that sort of like unabashed hope and, and brightness and light and, and that was very important to us and, and, and it was funny Peter Roth who runs Warner Brothers television um, after Melissa after he saw the pilot he said Melissa is the closest I've seen to Christopher the closest feeling I've gotten to see with anybody with that ass uh, that I've gotten since, since Christopher Reeve and, and we really feel that too the Tom Williams theme in the <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much. I meant, uh, yeah, what else? Well, the Richard, the, the John Williams thing, not the Well, there's actually a Blake Neely, who's our, our composer, actually is friends with John Williams, and there, there's a, there, there's no, there's a, um, they hang out, they jam. When, uh, yeah, <laughs> when, um, when, when Superman finds Kara in the pod, it, it's not the theme, but there's like an echo of it um, that he put in there, which we thought was, uh, which uh, Blake was really excited about. Guest stars coming up, or guest stars you'd like to have on the show? Um, well, I think like like with Flash and Arrow, you know, we would love to have you know people who've been associated with the with the Superman you know universe. But you know, for us, that's we always feel like we're just the lucky jerks who get to get to you know like you know hold the steering wheel for this this leg of the journey, and, and we always feel uh, a sense of obligation and honor to to have all the people who. <laughs> help make it what it is so you know I, I think you know in that sense we'll probably do that and I, we're going to announce a big name uh, joining the show tonight so nice. we're, we're the board. Uh, that's, that's been the news. well I actually met Laura at the Saturn Awards and she was so sweet when she she tweeted about the show which I thought was so nice when, when it was first announced and it wasn't announced and, and she said good luck and and, um, and uh, uh, we started a conversation and you know and there's no definitive plans right now but, but having Laura on is exactly the kind of thing that like that makes us happen you know um, elephant in the room what about crossovers with Flash and Arrow you know th those decisions are above my pay grade <laughs> um, you know I think that uh, you know there's always a danger when you start to expand those things that they can 
collapse in on themselves and, and uh, you know, much to our shock and, um, uh, you know, in fulfilling our hopes, Arrow and Flash actually helped each other and made each other stronger. And, um, uh, you know, now we're adding legends to that. I, you know, I'm not sure right now there's any, like, big desire on our part to sort of mix it all, even if, even if that was... Even if, A, we could do it, we were allowed to do it, or, or B, even if it was like a directive. So, but, but what's great about Supergirl is that it's, it's going to be one of our shows. And just like on Flash, we had Firestorm, and on Arrow, we had Flash. Supergirl is going to have other DC Comics heroes come on to the show. Um, so it'll, it'll start to feel like its own expanded universe, um, just in the same way that the other shows do. Is there a danger of too many shows? I mean, it's very rapid succession. We've gone from Arrow to Flash to Supergirl to Legends of Tomorrow. I mean, I guess the audience will tell us. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, you know, I only know for you. I mean, for us, we didn't have any. We didn't have any interest in sort of doing the same show again. And when we were talking, initially talking about doing another spinoff, you know, they all they all felt small. Um, for, 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 you know, when we were talking about doing a spin-off of Flash and Arrow, and um, it wasn't until we sort of said, you know, the only, the only thing that we haven't really done is a team, and, you know, and doing something that's, that's you know, as, as, as grounded as Flash is, doing something completely <laughs> ungrounded, you know, and doing something that's just, like, bonkers, and, and fun, and loud, and crazy, and crash, and funny, and, um, so for us, Legends, even though it's part of that universe, it, it doesn't feel like the same show. And with Supergirl, it, Supergirl feels, a, you know, it, it, because A, it's because it's set with the film in Los Angeles, it doesn't feel like those other shows, which are all shot in Vancouver. Any possibility of tying it into Smallville? I, I, no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we would ever suggest that it's the same so, universe, because okay. they, they had a car, you know, they had a Supergirl on that show, but, yeah. but certainly we're open to actors from that time. Yeah, we've met you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys.